before I get started, I'll put on some, some of this gloves in a bottle, which is wonderful stuff. Keeps my hands safe from any chemical that might be going on. The painting that we enjoy the most, the paintings that we enjoy the most, are the ones that reflect the highest convergence of what I call history and meaning. Both of those terms need to be defined. By history, I mean the history of human movement. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that for just a second. I'm going to turn this board over. And uh, can I play with you just a little bit? There's no way I can tell if you're going to cheat. But I would like you to, uh, let me get a great big fat marker. Here we go. I would like you to close your eyes for two seconds. Ready? Go. Now. Okay. Now open. <laughs> Some of you cheated. I know, but you get the point anyway. I made a mark while your eyes were closed, or supposedly closed, I made this mark. You can tell simply by looking at this mark how a human being made it. You can assume that they had some fat marker in their hand. You, can, you, you could come up here to the board and you could basically retrace the motions I went through. Isn't that right? And some of you cheated and watched, so you know, but even if you hadn't, you would know. You could tell that some person started down here, went up like this, went over this. All right, I'm lying. You caught me, didn't you? No, of course somebody didn't start down here. You knew better than that. You could tell that somebody took a marker and went like this. Can't you? You could tell they did it fast. You, can, you, could, you, know, you could do it in slow motion and recreate almost exactly. That's what I call a very clear, transparent history of human movement. It's very easy to tell how that was done. Okay? Now, if you apply this principle to painting, the same thing exists. We enjoy being able to tell, when we look at a painting, we en enjoy, I contend, that the greatest, some of the greatest pleasure we get is that we enjoy being able to tell that a t person took a brush and did this motion, boom, boom, e e e e squish, squish, dum, dum. We, we liked being able to see brush strokes. It's what I think most art professors would call a painterly technique. I contend we enjoy seeing that. In fact, there are many in the 20th century, many artists, many famous artists, who believe that that was so fundamental, so critical to the act of painting, that they are creating entire paintings that consist of nothing but very transparent movement. And many of them are very, very delightful to look at. I think, and I'm, I've been chewing on this uh, theory for many years now, and I'm not dissuaded from it yet. I think, however, that the paintings that we enjoy the most are the ones that in fact have a convergence of two things. The, the history of human movement, as I just illustrated, is very transparent, clear, obvious. And yet at the same time, there is meaning. And by that I'm calling it some recognizable entity. Now normally I would say a recognizable thing, like this looks like a horse, this looks like Big Ben, this looks like a person, this looks like a uh, double-decker bus, a recognizable thing. I expand it to the word entity because the meaning could be even as abstract as the color orange, the color fuchsia, the color chartreuse, whatever, the color brown. So it can be, uh, and I, never mind, I, I don't have time to get into any more philosophical detail than that. I'm going to leave it as it is. I think that what our, our, our brains enjoy the most, and when I say brain, of course, I really mean mind, but what our minds enjoy the most is that convergence of things that are recognizable, and yet they were rendered with a very transparent history of movement. I, my, by far my hero in this regard, I don't think there's anyone in all of art history that has uh, surpassed Rembrandt in his etchings and drawings. So there you go. I'm, a, I'm an absolute gaga fan of Rembrandt, an unparalleled genius, especially in this regard, especially in his etchings and drawings, where he takes a, he ta you can tell he took his stylus, it was an etching, or he took his brush or his pen, and he just, he just goes like, you can tell, he just went like this, blah, blah, blah. And in that, blah, blah, is, is a face of, you know, uh, a mother weeping over her lost son. I mean, it's just incredible. And all the expression is there, the face is right, and yet you can see he went like this. He didn't belabor it, he didn't go carefully, he didn't see, 
you know, oh, sad, you know, eyebrow and mouth turned down. No, he just went like this. And the expression is there. Un unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you want to know who I think a lot of, yeah, Rembrandt. I think a lot, of other, a lot of other people as well, but I think there's no one that has done it better. So this was what I'm aiming for all the time in all of my artwork, a transparent history of movement. Now, this, this history is re it's a relative thing. When I do realism, you know, the more finely, pr carefully brushed I am, I'm using smaller brushes controlled more carefully, but still there's a range of freedom that someone could look up close and say, oh, uh, let me give you another example. In his paintings, Franz Halls, Go Google, better, let, better yet, go to, the, <laughs> go to Amsterdam and go to the Rijksmuseum and look at Franz Halls. Actually, there's one in the, the, the Detroit Museum, too, if, if that's closer for you. Um, uh, unbelievable, and a genius. He died far too young, as so many uh, geniuses through history have. Um, he may have equaled Rembrandt if he had been allowed to live. Uh, but he, he did many portraits, and this is back in the northern, uh, you know, Flemish. I don't remember if it was Flemish or Dutch. Uh, uh, one of the same as far as we're concerned today for the most part, but he would draw paint lace and when you stood back and looked at the artwork It would look I mean you could you could just inhale this was lace I mean, you could tell exactly what was going on and yet when you looked at it up close You could see every brush stroke one stroke 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 stroke. It's just absolutely amazing Okay, have, have I gushed enough for you <laughs> there? I hope that I have I think that's what makes paintings great is this and if, I hope that you see that these two are kind of work in opposition to each other. I use, the, I use the, the, the icon, the symbol of a cow often when I'm painting, when I'm talking, teaching painting. The more, the more careful you are to make it look exactly like a cow, then the harder it is to retain transparent history. Do you see? The more you retain the spontaneous, brushy uh, history of human movement uh, record on your canvas, the more difficult it is to make it look exactly like a cow. So these things are in opposition. They fight against each other, but it's your fun as an artist to try to accomplish both. That is certainly what I'm trying to do here. Okay, enough of that detour. Let me get back to painting. 